Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to some Toronto Raptor news, Riker. The Raptors land, Raptors Reddit, Raptors Twitter, everyone's been talking about getting a center to this team, especially with the struggles of Aaron Baines, and one player that we've brought up along with many others is Andre Drummond, but finally it seems like there's more legitimate substantial reports surrounding Andre Drummond. There's speculation I think it was from an ESPN reporter a week ago saying the Raptors could potentially be interested, but then this morning, Shams came out and said that the Raptors and Cavaliers are engaged in active trade talks on a potential Andre Drummond deal, so the, that was followed up by, uh, or uh, Woj tweeted earlier in the morning that the Cavs are planning on sitting Andre Drummond to get him moved prior to the trade deadline, then this was sort of combated by Woj once again, saying that the Cavs gauge the market on Andre Drummond, but don't have any serious ongoing discussions right now. Obviously, Shams and Woj are two of the, the best reporters in the league, and regardless of who's right, where there's smoke, there is fire, Riker. So what are your thoughts on this report? these reports going out this morning? Sound the fire alarms, Ben. This is getting people in Raptors fandom, Raptors land excited. I know everybody is desperate to make a move, and you're absolutely right, Ben. Where these conversations are taking place, I think it proves that a move will be made before deadline. And whether it's for Andre Drummond, whether it's for John Collins, who was put on the block, or whether it's for Blake Griffin, who I hope to God it's not Blake Griffin that uh, a move is made for, but he's also in the process of being set to avoid injuries so that the Pistons can make a deal with him. Something is going to happen and something is going to happen that will alter the composition of this team. What scares me about Andre Drummond is his salary, Ben. That's what we're going to have to break down, but there is meat to this deal. It's no longer in sort of rumorville. The Raptors, they're having these talks. Something's going to happen, Ben. Yeah, and especially we we just lost the Minnesota Timberwolves are coming off back-to-back -back losses, tough games against the Celtics and the T-Wolves. This team just really, that hole at the center position, especially when OG and Anobi is down, is glaring. And Aaron Baines has proven not to be able to fulfill that role. Chris Boucher has shown promise, especially against certain teams, of being a guy that maybe could be reliable at the center position, but you'd look at him as more of a backup, and right now, he's our most reliable guy, and the fact that that's the case, Aaron Baines is getting put into a lot of minutes, so let's do a deep dive into Andre Drummond, because the biggest issue with him right now is clearly the contract, so getting trades to sort of line up don't really make sense when you look at it one-for-one one, Raptors and Cavaliers. There's no deal that... You see, you'd, you'd have to include Norman Powell, Patrick McCaw, Aaron Baines, and maybe a Terrence Davis or a Stanley Johnson. Four of those guys for an Andre Drummond who, yes, puts up a phenomenal box score, but impact is not nearly at the level of those numbers indicate. So I'm, I'm saying it out front, and I think you and I can sort of quickly get over this. You, you, we don't want to trade that many assets for an Andre Drummond trade, would you? No, because we just raised the point against the Minnesota Timberwolves in that loss that the Raptors' depth is maybe a question mark now for the team because it doesn't look like there's enough scoring off the bench consistently yep. to be able to string together wins throughout this regular season. So if you are gutting the deep bench plus Norman Powell, who's been the one real positive for the team this season, then what position does that leave the Raptors in even if they fill in the gap at the center spot? Now, you said there's no one-for-one. One. There's a perfect one-for-one, one, Andre Drummond and Kyle Lowry. And, of course, we heard earlier this season that Raptors front office is open to putting Kyle Lowry's name out there. And then we followed the reports and the actual listing of Kyle Lowry's house up in Toronto. So there's speculation around whether that means, you know, he's just preparing to part ways in free agency or if he just wants a little bit of extra cash given he's spending his time in Tampa this season. But, Ben, I I – if we look at putting Norm plus a ton of people to salary match just for Andre Drummond, that doesn't make sense. And if you're looking to just one for one Drummond and Kyle Lowry, that doesn't make sense either. Maybe a little bit more for the Raptors, but certainly not for the Cleveland Cavaliers who are already very guard heavy with much younger guys. And they're not really playoff competitive this year. Yeah. And when I said one for one, I meant like one Raptors and Cavs, no third team involved. So obviously Kyle Lowry and Drummond, the money could work there. But as you mentioned, the Cavaliers have Sexton and Garland in that backcourt and they 
don't really want a established guy coming in and taking minutes from them in their development because they've been very promising to start off this season. So I don't see Kyle Lowry going to the Cavs. And if Masai Ujiri did that, obviously there is shadiness and stuff or shade thrown at him for what he did to DeMar DeRozan, but you're getting a champion back and you're sending DeMar to one of the most established, well-organized franchises in the league. If you throw the Raptors' goat into the Cleveland Cavaliers, I don't care how promising their young talent is. I don't care how good they've been this year. That's a horrible look. I just don't want that to happen. So those deals, I think we're going to write off the table. That that They should not happen. We're firmly against that. Anyone in the comment section that's agree with that, you, feel free to leave an argument, but we won't agree with you. But there is potential for a three-team deal, and it's tough to really speculate on actual trades that could happen, but Riker, when we made the video just speculating on Andre Drummond, we brought up names like Terrence Davis and, you know, uh, maybe Stanley Johnson, Aaron Baines, one or two of those guys being put into a package, sent to a different team in the Raptors in return getting Andre Drummond. Drummond's a guy where obviously he's has those inflated stats and his impact is not felt in that way, but I'd be willing to give up one of those players or a couple of those guys, a little bit of that depth that we mentioned we're light on right now, to get an Andre Drummond, especially if it didn't include Norman Powell and especially not Kyle Lowry. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. And I think it's a natural segue now to also introduce, I don't know if you have the segment put into this one, but we're on the road to 20,000 subscribers also get into the like section if you're watching this video because of course this is the most exciting time right now for raptors fans after the treachery the drudgery that was this season so far i think everybody is hopeful that a move is going to be made to positively impact the team ergo positively impact the viewership on this channel because <laughs> i know everybody just wants to listen to more positive reactions so pop into the mm -hmm. like section subscribe if you haven't already but ben to me to you we broke it down three four times already because drummond has been the big fish in the speculation all season long now that it's legit we still think to make this happen it has to include a third team and what did we pitch out this morning when we had a meeting with our writer team i i, I think maybe sending kyle lowry to a team like the 76ers makes the most sense if you're moving him uh, but you'd have to move Tobias Harris probably in a move like that. The issue is, I, I think a three team is the only way to do it. Maybe we should have iterated a couple of trade possibilities, but I have all the players and all the contracts pulled up in front of me here, Ben. There's going to have to be a lot of mastery put into a deal to make something like this work, because what would the Cleveland Cavaliers want right now? They probably want picks. They want guys to boost their young core. If they're Drummond is a veteran, so if they're fine to part ways with a veteran, then clearly that's not what they're looking for. They're not looking to make a push this season. They're looking to grow their team. Raptors, like we said at the beginning, they don't really have enough depth to be trading four or five guys in return for one. So we're probably looking at moving Kyle Lowry. And then who's the third team? What would that look like? So there's a lot of question marks, Ben, that I, I don't know if if anybody has the answers for right now. Yeah, and we've brought up the the report in the past that Miami Heat are very interested in trading for Kyle Lowry. So potential three-way deals and sending Kyle Lowry to Miami, Iguodala, uh, Kelly Olenek, and maybe a couple picks or something second round, maybe one first round to Cleveland, and then the Raptors getting in return, uh, Duncan Robinson and Andre Drummond. That's a deal we've seen thrown out in the past. We've also seen deals with the Philadelphia 76ers, Lowry going down there. The Raptors are uh, receiving, obviously, Andre Drummond, and then, again, picks and salary filler going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's that's rumors, and, or that those are mostly rumors. There's no actual reports with those three team deals besides the fact we all know that the Miami Heat are interested, but it feels like any, any grinded-out player across the NBA the Miami Heat are interested in, so I don't know how much that actually means they'd be willing to make a trade. But, yeah, and it's tough to really go down that rabbit hole without bringing up crazy possibilities and I'm sure we'll have videos coming up as we inch closer to the trade deadline about more possible deals or obviously if reports come out linking teams to this sort of negotiations and talks but Riker with all that said with all that in mind I don't think I'm comfortable with sending away Kyle Lowry in return for Andre Drummond and even if we have the comfort of 
sending him to a team where it's respectful it's respectful to the Raptors goat you're not sending him to a trash fan base or anything like that I don't think it's a valuable move I don't think it's an upward move the Raptors would make an Andre Drummond deal to compete right now because Andre Drummond certainly doesn't look like he's going to improve that much in the future. He's a guy that, I guess we've broken down it down a lot in previous videos, but he's a tremendous rebounder. He's not a great defender. He gets over overshot by the better centers in the league, like Joel Embiid leaves rent free in his head. And he's not a three-point shooter. He's not a good free throw shooter. There's a lot of holes in Andre Drummond's game that makes you question whether or not he can play down the stretch of games. And all that sort of stuff, but he's certainly an improved passer. He's a great finisher around the rim. He can dunk and stuff, and he's a tr one of the best rebounders in the NBA. So there's definitely, where the Raptors have a lot of holes, Andre Drummond's game can certainly fill those in, but you're leaving more and more question marks when you bring a guy like that in. So a guy like Kyle Lowry, who we've seen, and I've argued is our best player this season, not even not even closer, not even most important, because those are the terms we've been throwing around with Lowry for a long time. He's objectively the best, in my opinion, right now. I don't, I don't think there's any wordsmithing. Objectively, you can put in my opinion. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, because we wordsmith Kyle Lowry. Because you look at Siakam last season, you'd say he's the best, but Lowry's number one. Yeah, I guess I'm saying Lowry's the best and the number one and all those sorts of things, in my opinion. In that case, I guess objectively isn't the word, but... I don't think you give up that level of player for an Andre Drummond who, for all of his strengths, have even more holes and question marks and weaknesses. Well, when we did, when we got the news that John Collins was put onto the trade mm -hmm. block by the Atlanta Hawks, a lot of the conversation was around, well, what is his trade value compared to Andre Drummond? And I think in our sort of side by side comparison, we said that they both have shortcomings as any player would but it seems like john collins would be able to offer you more and this is not a john collins trade video it's obviously an andre drummond but i think it's worth noting although the raptors haven't been tied to any sort of real negotiation with the atlanta hawks that if you're going to be making a move that's going to include do we both agree either kyle lowry or norm Powell? you're not getting away with making a trade that doesn't include one of those two guys fred van vliet and boucher can't be moved Siakam, I don't, I don't think he's going to be moved for anybody. Oh, gee, that one would hurt. I think it's got to be Kyle Lowry or Norman Powell. And so if you're going to move one of those guys, to me, there's just more upside on John Collins. So if you're going to be aggressive to make a move this season to become more competitive, I wouldn't look to say, how can we salary match a $28 million guy with all of these downsides that you mentioned, Ben, unless a third team comes in to add a guy like Duncan Robinson. And that's where it becomes really interesting. That's where I hope that this conversation or this narrative is going to move towards as we get more reports come out from the likes of Cham and Woj and all of these guys that, you know, we link a much larger deal because if you're looking at the, not necessarily one for one with trades, but just getting one guy, like giving away one guy, re receiving one guy, that is where you're right. The trade just doesn't seem to really improve situation that much. Yeah, and in a theoretical world, obviously Masai Ujiri is more in tune and with other league executives and the cap situations than any fan of this Toronto Raptors team. So I'm just hoping, putting my faith in Masai, that maybe he could do a Terrence Davis and Stanley Johnson deal to get Andre Drummond. We saw Andre Drummond traded for Brandon Knight and John Henson, which is the equivalent to, uh, what is it, the, the washing machine that was traded in semi-pro. So... That, if that was his value last season, I don't know with one year left on his deal what that value really is currently at. So maybe he could get it done with some cap space magic that Masai Ujiri could pull. That's my one hope. But realistically speaking, I'd agree. Kyle Lowry, Norm Powell would probably be have, have to be added to one of these moves. And if you're going to add one of those guys to one of those moves, John Collins is certainly the, the better pickup than than Andre Drummond, even though people said, and they mentioned it in the video we actually talked about him, saying that no, he's not a true center, he doesn't fill those holes, and yeah, but he's a much more talented guy, he's much more mobile on the defensive end, he's a strong rebounder, a better rebounder than Aaron Baines, I think a move like that, specifically if it's for Norman Powell, could actually potentially improve us, especially where John Collins is a younger guy, and the, the question marks around him is he's a restricted free agent. He'd be more expensive, and you'd have to give up more assets. But 
the one thing I don't, I guess we can turning into a John Collins sort of speculation <laughs> talk because it, it's important to look at the competition when you're bringing up a guy that's in Andre Drummond. And reports came out since that video that the Atlanta Hawks would be only looking for a, a first round pick that could be a potential lottery pick, a potentially high pick. So we joked before we got on recording with this podcast, striker, but the Raptors are currently a lottery team and maybe... If we can make the money work with uh, Baines, I know Collins hasn't gotten that lar- large extension after. Do you think a Raptors first round pick and Aaron Baines could get the the deal done for John Collins? Because I think that would be a significantly better trade than anything that's been brought up over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, well, you don't even need to trade Aaron Baines. You could trade whoever you want, really. John Collins' contract is only $4 million. Yep. He's still on that sort of rookie deal, so... Baines at seven, I I don't know. I didn't try it out, but you don't. You could give up whoever you want. You could give up Patrick McCaw, whatever. I I I'm not sure what it would take to get it done. I'm not sure what his interest is because the flip side, it's the complete opposite of Andre Drummond. His value is probably going down. He's coming into his free agency, but he's probably going to get signed at a lot less than what he's making. Whereas John Collins, you're bringing him in. He's expecting a max, so it's a true rental situation unless you're willing to give him the bag. So. Um, I, I think that that maybe diminishes his market value when he's on the trade block because teams are like, well, we have to test them. We don't know if he's a max contract guy and half a season is not really a lot to prove that. So his value might be low enough that you could get away with trading Aaron Baines and a pick for him. And I'd certainly be comfortable to do that then. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of a, a trade that I'd be willing to do to, to end this one off with the realistic stuff. Riker, you mentioned another guy at the start of it because we're just diving into everyone on the block. This guy obviously wouldn't command his own video, but multi-time all-star, former dunk champion Blake Griffin is also being rested for a, a long stretch of time. And who knows, maybe the comment section would be interested in picking up Blake, But and if you are, let us know down below. We'll make a whole video on it. But any thoughts on picking up his $36 million contract, Riker? <laughs> Well, you said it, $36 million. You'd have to give up Kyle and Norm to get Blake back. We said we're not even really comfortable to give up Kyle or Norm to get somebody back at this point. So that's not happening. But it's an interesting prospect that they are sitting him looking to be moved because I don't know who in the league wants to make a move for this guy. His stats are so down this season. He's really not producing. Apparently, he hasn't dunked since 2019 in-game. I don't know if you saw that, which is astronomical to me so i don't know what's going to happen with him i hope the raptors stay far away from that one then well Riker, uh unfortunately i didn't stay far away from him. he's currently on my fantasy team so i know the treachery of uh blake griffin's season this year so definitely don't recommend picking him up but let us know what you guys think let us know if you're interested in andre drummond trade are you excited about these reports are you just excited that the raptors are talking to someone you know seeing if something will change we got an exciting stretch of games coming up so hopefully the team will bounce back and against the the bucks and the sixers the top talent in the nba but stay subscribed to the raptors digest you're the best for making this far check out the twitter the instagram all the cool stuff check out raptorsdigest.ca for some of the best articles out there uh check out uh the tiktok videos coming left right and center Riker, you have any last words our list is getting long then it's getting but... long <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. like and subscribe <laughs> i'm throwing it back up on the screen road to 20k we're uh we're really we really want to get there soon so yeah we really appreciate you guys cheers